if you're someone who's had that ethic to get to that level of body fat, these things will make it a walk in the park. But mm. if you're looking to use these things to get to that condition, well, you've already got a shortcut mentality where you are not really aiming to be as pale as possible. You're looking to be as conditional as possible with as minimal effort. Hey, Kurt, you found a study about exercise pills um, not really being a metabolic booster. So let's discuss that. Let me share my screen. I woke up uh, feeling spicy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> feeling rebellious. <laughs> I guess to sort of open what this paper discusses is what we already know to be insanity of mm -hmm. expecting to take a pill that will do the exact same as exercise. Whereas yeah. what or, or we've less, done or less, it's uh, going to yeah, be less uh, than exercise. <clears throat> yeah, well, that's it. But what I mean is what we come at the angle of is some of these things that it discusses in the paper alongside exercise. So yeah, th this is sort of coming at the angle of what society would want to do. And let's just mm. pop a pill and say that they exercised for an hour. Which, yeah, it, which it, it's is, the same with the, the, the Trevor Grumop and Greta Smop, right? What they want is to take a pill and it grows muscle. Yeah. Which, yeah. I mean, some steroids, yeah. oral steroids do that to a certain extent. I mean, testosterone oh, built tissue I mean, without will, exercise. Some will do it to an extent, depending. If if you're a cow, yeah. Caveat well, if you're a cow. The, it, we, yeah. we, I mean, we touched on this. It, it more has to do with yeah. the age and the stem cell availability that the cow has at the time it's given. It's not, right. most human males are already at their natural genetic limit you can't the same as if you give trembolone to a bull they don't grow right so right you know we are we would be considered bulls you give a trembolone you have a walk on eat grass not going to grow but that's not a trembolone fault that's an age fault or a right. maturation fault from testosterone um what i find so interesting is the problem i see with all these pills is that it breeds laziness right everyone's looking for this this excuse or this thing yeah. that's going to get them to the next level there is no thing that's going to get you there. And in fact, the laziness is so extreme now that I, so when I posted it originally, I put just the abstract in my stories. Right. And then the next slide, I linked the whole story because I figured, well, if I want people to actually understand this stuff, they should probably read the whole study. And I know that most people probably don't know how to find the study. So I posted the link, the amount of DMs I got commenting on it and asking me what my opinion was when I gave them the study was like, just reaffirm the laziness. It's like, they literally yeah, they don't want to read it themselves. Them. <laughs> they don't want to read it. <laughs> ask, you're going to ask me and you're not going to read it. If I were your teacher, I'd fail you. No joke. You and know I what the title of this podcast. podcast is going to be? Exercise mimetics don't work. I got I got to bait them in, man. That is a bait. This is, no, it's not yeah. that it doesn't work, but the study's just showing it's not a replacement for exercise. And that's, that's no. all I've been saying since day one when you guys brought this stuff up is... Yeah, <laughs> and it's very true. It replace I exercise? Mean, no, I do cardio. I run twenty miles a week. I guarantee yeah, my mitochondria is better than anyone that uses these stupid drugs. <laughs> true, you know. True. What's so funny? Like, what, what What's funny with these drugs is that the term exercise mimetics always comes from the animal models, right? They discuss mm -hmm. that here in the study. They go over ICAR and cardarine and yep. uh, metformin is discussed a little bit, and they all discuss mitochondrial health here in this study. The term exercise mimetic is basically a comparison in this high fat diet model or high fat, high carb diet model where mice or rats are um, exposed to. And then they do one exercise group and one um, drug group and see that the results are comparable. But, you know, if, if it speeds up metabolism, it doesn't mean that it gives you the same metabolic and um, hormonal response as exercise. Because if you do research on exercise, what it releases, I mean, it releases growth hormone, testosterone, vascular and multilor growth factor, brain-derived neurotropic factor, MOTC levels go up from exercise. I discussed that in the MOTC deep dive. And, and none of these studies show that SLUPP332 or ICAR or, or metformin or whatever increase MOTC levels or any of these other hormonal markers that exercise does increase. Um, look, at, look at GLPs. You know? you, we produce yeah. GLP. They're, they're a naturally occurring thing. And you know what they come from? Yeah. Dietary fiber. So the average yeah. American needs no fiber. They wonder why their gut's a mess. And then they need to take a drug to basically replace oh, the oatmeal that they should be eating anyway. Yeah. You know, yeah, not yeah, to piss people's that. oatmeal, but it doesn't make any sense. Just do the damn work, right? If you want to yeah. add to that work by taking performance enhancing things, so be it. 
but don't try to use them as an excuse not to do things. Right. No, and that's and that's what we see quite often is that you know people in the comment section uh, you know compound X Y Z didn't work. It's, well, it's probably because you didn't work. Yeah, you didn't work exactly. <laughs> yeah. Your diet sucks. Your training sucks. Yeah. You don't do yeah, any cardio. You, right. You're not your getting sleep. Mitochond- you're stressed out. Yeah, oxidative stress and all that stuff. So your mitochondria are just broken. So it might take some time to fix them, and, and it starts again with the diet and you know making sure that that's all on point first. But like yeah. even exercise and comparing it to a single <clears throat> compound so an exercise mimetic being a chemical so <clears throat> let's be even more strict so a single chemical can do the exact same work in our bodies as exercise being at the top of it moving our muscular system and from that then you use your cardiovascular system and from the cardiovascular system you have blood and nutrients going to the tissues and then the tissues using those nutrients for X, Y, and Z or doing exercise without nutrients available, operating off another energy system. It's bonkers to ever think that we could develop a single compound, a single chemical that you ingest orally or inject and is going to have the same effect as moving your muscular system alongside obviously your skeleton and your cardiovascular system and all the benefits that come from that. It's just crazy. Yeah. So post up, Steve, post up an image of human metabolism, like the map of human metabolism. So people yeah. can see mm-hmm. this. When people try to summarize this in a statement, like this does this, I, I don't know a single, I know some pretty smart people. I don't know a single person that can explain this whole diagram. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah that <laughs> it's, diagram, it's it just, yeah. I remember looking at like the crab cycle or the citric acid yeah. cycle, being a, t- a tiny little part of this whole big map, it's it's profound to even ever make absolute statements. And okay. I guess that's where that's where when we're talking about things like SLU, cardrine, lipotropin, GH fragment, all these little things that play into helping move your skeleton, move, like w- resistance training, uh, cardio exercise, we're using these things to augment the processes, not actually be the process. No, right. And that's that's the key thing to take away from. I will say that if you add these compounds in, stack them together with diet and exercise, it makes the diet and exercise significantly more effective and easier. Um, because I do remember, you know, doing natural, doing the whole diet and exercise thing and getting leaner took significantly longer and was a lot more um, strenuous than it is now with these compounds in place. I also spend an arm and a leg. Well, the value is- But you did it. I think that there's a lot of importance in doing it naturally so you understand how your body Mm -hmm. works and what it responds to, right? If 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 you're 18 years old and you just throw drugs in the equation, you never actually learn what your body's doing. And then you become entirely reliant. Those are the same guys that when they either have to come off because their health fails or they go on a cruise, they lose all their tissue, right? And they're constantly going up and down because they never learned how to train. I trained yeah. until I was natural. I, I was no zero hormones until I was 40. Well, wow, yeah. And I could mm-hmm. get more peeled. I mean, I said you picture, I could get leaner naturally than most pro bodybuilders are getting with all these freaking drugs because I have <laughs> self control and discipline. That's right. what you need to learn that first before you throw the mm-hmm. chemicals in. But there's no substitution yeah. for work. True. Right? No. It doesn't matter what your genetics are. I, I brought that up before, like long before. Well, I always go back and say if I could teach everything I know now to like my 20, mid 20 year old self who had no problem with self-control, losing body fat and everything from martial arts, that would be so much easier. But it does start with the ethic of having the control of like it really like when people look at what it takes to get truly contest peeled to the Mm. point where there is no fat on your feet, on your glutes sitting standing hurts like whilst we all have big smiles on our faces bloody hurts your feet if the feet are miserable when you walk when when you have to wear three three pairs of socks uh and one of them is like those big thick fluffy socks as the the final layer of socks (laughs) like you sit down like you sit on something hard and you actually pinch your sciatic nerve because you got nothing left in your butt uh, you know, I've I've said it before. What we've we've spoken about before with using GLPs, the mitochondria optimization. If you're someone who's had that ethic to get to that level of body fat, these things will make it a walk in the park. But mm. if you're looking to use these things to get to that condition, well, 
you've already got a shortcut mentality where you are not really aiming to be as peel as possible. You're looking to be as conditional as possible with as minimal effort. Yeah. The ones who have gotten down to deep dog straight glutes will understand and appreciate the extra leverage that these things bring and make it more enjoyable because quite honestly, the amount of cardio, the amount of dieting that's required repetitively to get down to those deep set points. We spoke about it before, but I chronicled in pictures on SN Education's forum before of like 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. And with each prep or long diet phase, I got harder and harder and harder because I broke through sticking points that you'd end up with at the end of a prep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you you do have to do multiple diets to get past these plateaus more efficiently. Like you get to a plateau and you've got two choices, either really dig in deep with more cardio, less food, and you will get conditioned, but you'll end up like a skeleton with loss of muscle mass in the process. Mm -hmm. That if anyone's listening on their first or second time competitors, you need to understand what your limits are for that first long diet, if it is your first ever diet. Um, yeah. And and yeah. the difference between off season and getting in shape is such a, it's a mind fuck, you know, for most guys. Like I'm getting small, I'm getting small, I'm getting small. That prevents them from actually getting lean because mm -hmm. they never really get into that flat state that you need to be to really shave off that last little bit of body fat. Yep, same uh, with guys trying to get big, right? They get stuck in this, you know, as soon as their face shows a little bit of roundness or where their body fat, like even yeah. increases, they, they pull the food right back and they, they never grow, right? These are the guys that get stuck at 180 forever. Main gaining, bro. You know. <laughs> well, they're not even doing that because it's, I never let my body fat get in control, when I, but I still had to eat. Yeah. Right, you can uh -huh. still control your body fat and grow. Um, that's why I would refer to it as a progress season, not an off season, because you're not really right. off. That that mm -hmm. that implies you're on vacation. There's no vacation yeah. when you want to look like a bodybuilder. Um, no, it's and then more, most guys in the off season they start eating thousand like deficit. hamburgers. Yeah, hamburgers. Yeah, and, stick with and, your, and yeah, I can yeah, eat. eat so, why, why don't you eat the same things that got you lean? Just eat more of the same foods that got you lean. So, you do. so you're yeah. a little bit of a surplus. Yeah, bit if of you a just double your carb portion, you'll grow. Yeah, that, it's, really it's actually you that simple. Carbs, <laughs> you some it's really yeah. that simple. I know. Well, we've made it. The internet, I think. I was talking to my wife about that this morning. It's I, when I started doing this stuff, there was no internet that we right, you had to look through books and stuff. Mm -hmm. like, I've said this a million times. It just, it's incredibly frustrating to me because most of the information on the internet is either garbage or confusing or misleading or make it seem like this complicated thing. And it's not that difficult to get in shape. You have to do the damn work. Yeah. Right. But anyone can get in shape. I've never met anyone that couldn't get in shape. The ones that don't seem to do it are not putting the work. 